All right, guys, so Mike here with Haro Canucks, and I'm jumping on camera again today because I wanted to try something a little bit different. Now, you might not actually know this, or you might have known this from a couple of the other videos that I've done in the new office here in Montreal, is that Snows from Boot Sequence is actually sharing a larger office space with us. And yes, we're gonna do a complete office tour once all of the renovations and things like that are done, but he's been bugging me for a long, long time about something called Indium. And now Indium, according to him, could be a replacement for thermal paste, for thermal pads, and all sorts of things. The only thing is that I wanted to test it, but at the same time, he doesn't know that I have it. And he's actually on vacation today, and I wanted to give him a call to see if I can sort of like prompt him to come in. I hope he picks up. Give me one second, I'm right here. Hey, hey, hey Snows, how's it going? Hey, hey, Mike, why are you calling me on my day off? <laughs> That's the worst thing you could have said to me. But anyways, listen, I know that you've been asking for this for like a while, but we finally got some Indian sheets in. And if you don't come to the office, I really want to try them out. So if you don't no, come no, in- No, 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 shut up. I'm coming, I'm coming, okay? <laughs> All right. I'm already in the car. I was doing some groceries. I bought, I bought some fruits and stuff. I'm coming right now. He's trying to lose weight, by the way, but you know. Anyway, yeah. so yeah, get into the office and I'm going to start setting up a, a test system by the time uh, by the time you get here. So anyways, I guess, I guess with that, guys, uh, He'll get here and here's a message from our sponsor. Oh, there's a sponsor spot. <laughs> there is, there is now. Introducing a new way to temper glass with a divider 300 series from Thermaltake. I love me a good triangle. There's certain mystery behind it with a flexible interior layout so you can showcase your system in a particular way. The divider 300 TG, triangle the right way. All right, so Snow's made it here to the office the fastest I've ever seen him do it. So I wanted to introduce you guys. This is Snow's from our Boot Sequence channel. Hello, everyone. I'm <laughs> you might, Snow's. You might have seen him before. I think we did, uh, we did a video with you we last year. We did a year. couple of videos, actually. So when I was thin, we did a smartphone video. <laughs> then after that, I was still thin, and we did the, the PC case video. And uh, now we're here. And COVID hit, and uh, um, that's I'm, basically why we're masked up, too. And uh, we've put on a couple pounds, both of us. Yeah, both of us. <laughs> so anyways, I really wanted to talk to you about Indium and why you chose it. But as you describe all your technical details and things like that, you came in so fast, I wasn't able to finish the test system. So I'm gonna go and finish the test system while you hop on and explain to the good folks what Indium is and why you bothered me about it for like a year. Perfect. Ooh, it's heavy. It is. All right, so before I talk Indium, Let's talk about liquid metal, right? The stuff that's sold at like Thermal Grizzly and stuff like that. Now, just to recap, liquid metal thermal compounds like Thermal Grizzly's Conductinot are all variations of Galistan. And no, that's not a country. It's a mix of gallium, indium, and tin. The base, or let's say the official recipe of Galistan is 68% gallium, 22% indium, and 10% tin. It also stays in liquid form all the way down to negative 19 degrees Celsius, which is pretty crazy and probably the reason why they use it in thermometers. It didn't make sense to me since each individual one of these metals have higher melting points than that, but now I know that any metal alloy has a melting point that is lower than the individual pure metals. Quite honestly, the first thing that came to my mind was aluminum foil. On paper, it's amazing. It has incredible heat conduction at about 240 watts per meter Kelvin. But of course, that's been tried already. And according to people online, it's really bad. All right, so after foil, of course, are graphite pads or Thermal Grizzly's Carbonate. But that's kind of boring. Everyone tried this out last year, and there's no reason for me to just retest it. So I chose Indium. So that's what I got here, an Indium sheet. By the way, you can buy it in rock form or even in tiny, tiny ingots, but that's nor here nor there. We got sheets. Uh, so I'm gonna put my mask back on because I think that Mike is done. So Mike, are you done with the uh, test system? Yeah, it's done. So let me explain to you what I have here. So first of all, I installed a Noctua U12S with its fan running at 100%. So that's just to make sure that no fan speed curves impact the results in any way. Okay. There's also an i5-11400 down there, along with, well, this is a control test, Arctic MX-4. So this is well known as one of the best thermal compounds out there, but at the same time, Arctic sent us a whole turkey baster of a tube for it. I mean, it's not that bad. This is what, one or two The Verge style applications? <laughs> Well, like, no, well, yeah, actually, that sadly. But anyways, as I was putting the thermal compound on, a couple of questions came up. Mm -hmm. And I think the first one of those was, 
look, you, these things, they have a syringe. So uh -huh. you're not making direct contact with your fingers most of the time. Yeah. And they're not toxic to begin with. Yep. So is this toxic? Is your Indian pants toxic? Or I guess not. That's like a cup of noodles or something? Right? Yeah, well, no. Uh, <laughs> indium is not toxic. It is very, very safe to handle. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, here it is. Personally, I just don't want to touch the actual metal because I don't want to imprint any kind of oil from my finger onto uh, the sheet. But it is very shiny, very malleable, and this is indium. Okay, so with that out of the way, and I'm not going to be sort of like growing flipper grandkids, which is <laughs> good. Uh, what about electrical conductivity? Do I have to worry about going a little bit further than my actual IHS on my, on my CPU? Will it short out components? Yes, it would short out components if two components would be shorted. On an IHS, as you know, um, you wouldn't be able to short anything. Just cut it so that it's slightly smaller than the IHS and you'll be perfectly fine. So I guess in that case, will it melt? I, this is one of the biggest things that I was wondering because you were saying that gallium, I think it is, has yep. a very, very low melting point. Th does this one have a high melting point? Yeah, so gallium, which is part of Galistan too, uh, would melt in the palm of your hands. You know, your hand is a little bit hotter, so that's what, 36C? Well, for Something you like always that. have like supposedly super cold hands. Yeah, but... so for me it's like 32C. <laughs> but this will melt at 156.6C. That's Celsius for uh, all the Canadians. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. You can use a Google converter. <laughs> As is, it's pretty good because CPUs don't really get that hot. They get up to what? 99 degrees Celsius on an Intel CPU if it's going to get uh, thermal throttling. Well, right? maybe on the HD, HEDT platform, it could get a little bit higher depending on the processor that you have. Like the 10980XE back there, that thing can put out like 125 watts without, without breaking a sweat. But of course, it'll thr throttle itself back at that point. Jesus Christ. But <laughs> yeah, this is just a little bit higher and it's actually an advantage that it has such a low melting point um, without actually turning liquid. Because the hotter it gets, the more soft, the more malleable it gets, and the more it can fill those little nooks and crannies in between the cooler and the CPU IHS. It's not gonna be like a thermal paste, but it's gonna be something in between. But that's exactly what makes thermal paste so good. And I guess I do have a little bit of a surprise for Snows because he doesn't know what else I bought here. It's just because I didn't know exactly what this was or the exact application for you. So we have two different thicknesses here. One of them is 0.15 millimeters and the other one is, what is it, 0.2 that I bought? Yeah, so 0.2 millimeters. So there's two different thicknesses. Can you explain a little bit more? Wow, you really splurged on that, Mike. <laughs> Only the best for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, as is, it's a very good thing that you did here because as you might know already, coolers and uh, CPU IHSs are not perfectly mating. That's why you need thermal compounds and stuff. Um, so one of them is concave, the other one's convex, one of them is pitted, the other one's not. One of them has direct uh, CU heat pipe thing, the other one doesn't. So the thicker you go with indium, the more meat you have to push through those nooks and crannies. So that's why personally, I think that the 0.2 millimeter version will perform slightly better than the 0.15, but it is to be tested. Okay, so speaking of performance, this has been running for about like 15 minutes now, and the maximum CPU temperature looks to be around 73 degrees. So we will use this basically as our control. We're gonna take off the cooler now in order to see worst case scenario, what would happen if we went raw dog? Exactly. What happens if we would go directly with no thermal interface between the CPU and the heatsink? Because I'm still not convinced of this stuff. I'll okay. be honest with you. That's fine. So let's do that. All right, so we've been running this for about 15 minutes and it's actually doing quite a bit better than either of us really thought. Yeah, I did not think it would survive. <laughs> No, but I think, okay, so we're hovering at around 92, with, which is still 20 degrees more than having thermal compound. But I think this is probably like a combination of a little bit more efficient CPU. Mind you, it's running at 130 watts right now, and it's not throttling either at 4.2 gigahertz, uh -huh. along with a really good cooler and probably a good blending between the IHS and the bottom of the cooler. Yeah, itself. I think that's, that's probably... That's definitely a big factor in that. I really, I thought it would skyrocket and burn itself out. <laughs> no, but it, but it basically didn't. So at least now we know what happens when there's absolutely nothing between the IHS and the cooler. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna take this apart. I'm gonna give, I'm finally gonna give this to Snows to start cutting. 
Uh, and we're gonna actually use the indium now to see if his prediction is correct. So I'm shooting for as good, if not just a little bit worse than um, the thermal paste. All right, so we've got my indium right here. We've got a CPU for reference and I have here gloves. Now, I told you before that uh, indium is non-toxic. You told me that actually. <laughs> yeah, but basically uh, I just want to use gloves so that I don't imprint any kind of oil on the actual CPU itself. So let me put those rubber on. All right, so the indium is installed without too many screw ups. It was super easy. You didn't slice your finger at least, no. which is what you did the other day. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I wanted to check first what the idle temperatures were because when we were running just raw, we were at around 39 to 40 degrees and right now it looks like it's idling at 30 to 31 with some cores at 29 degrees. So Hey, some cores are at 28 too. Okay, so that right away, uh -huh. It might be better than not putting anything on the CPU. So no, let's... it is better. It's clearly better. It's about well, it's... 10 degrees better. <laughs> we don't know if something was happening in the background with those, other, with those other idle results, but let's hit it with some load and see what ends up happening here. If you win this bet where I buy you a burger... Just you... buy me a salad. Okay, then I get the burger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, I also want to mention that with, without any thermal compound or any interface between the CPU and the cooler, the temperature shot right up to 80 degrees before gradually going up to that 92 that we ended up seeing. Uh -huh. Now, here, yes, it's been, what, like 15 seconds mm -hmm. out of our 15-minute test. We're at 67, 68, so... Well, from six, I see cores ranging from 63 to 60, well, 61, all the way up to about 68. Um, depending on the core. Yeah, so what I wanted to mention though is that on our CPU on this 11400, core number three is the hottest running core, which is what we took that 92 degrees off of. Okay. So that might end up screwing you. We're just gonna have to see that in what, like 15 minutes? Yeah, so we'll be back in about 15 minutes. And we'll see if he wins or loses that bet. Yep. So it's been actually 30 minutes because I really wasn't believing what I was seeing and I said so no there's no way we actually have to extend this test a little bit longer but right now uh, so what I can see is that it's one degree no 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 it's exactly the same as the MX4 application okay we, it was one degree cooler yes. for about 20 minutes uh, or the full half hour and <laughs> just now it turned to 73 on core 3 which makes it on par with thermal paste. Well, at least it's a good thermal paste and it's a, a single application, but maybe I'm just like throwing shade at you for no reason. Oh, now. this is not a single application. I'm gonna take that indium and put it in another system. Oh. <laughs> Why not? Let but, us know if you want us to try that out. But anyways, I, I really think that this is, this is actually just the tip of the iceberg because there's so many other tests that we can do, but, but, I'm still not convinced it's just about indium. I wanted to try something else. What do you want to try? Uh, so it sort of looks like indium. And it's made oh. by our friends at Alcan. Oh my God, Mike. It's aluminum foil. So here's why I think it'll fail. First of all, it's way thinner, right? Yeah. It's way thinner. Second of all, <laughs> I mean, seriously, Mike? <laughs> the, things, the things that I start pulling out over here. Anyways, right. so I think what we're gonna do then is I'm gonna have you sort of Pull off the cooler, mm -hmm. take your indium, and I'll cut this up. We'll see how that performs. Perfect. And imagine if it's on par. Everybody's gonna be buying aluminum foil at like five dollars for four hundred feet. Honestly, I'll be I'll be impressed if it just beats raw dogging it. Okay, well, let's what do you check think? it out. I think I think that any type of interface between the CPU and the heatsink could improve things, whether or not it will, or introduce the air pockets you were talking about before. Uh -huh. That's the bigger question, but aluminum foil time. All right. Well, in that intermission, Snows was gloating the whole time. I have a really big smile <laughs> under there. So um, I finished with my little square of aluminum foil, but because of that gloating, guess who can take apart the system now? And that's you, my friend. I'm pretty excited to see that. We're almost ready to pop it off. All right, are imagine you ready? If it, imagine if it melted to the IHS. Oh, that's, I mean, if it did, then I'll be impressed by that 9400. What is it, 10, 11400? 11400, yeah. But she's rocking at like 135 watts. So All that's right. quite a bit. Let's see. Okay, where'd it go? Where'd... 
Whoa. Of course it's there. Yo, it's imprinted. Right there. Holy crap. Oh, you can read the... the you can read actually part of Intel and what is that, a little trademark 2.9 gigahertz? Okay, maybe you can tell us what exactly went on here because now I'm... Is it the thickness? Because we used the 0.2 millimeters, right? Yeah, this is the 0.2 mil. And as you can see, there's a shiny circle and then you can see the imprint in the middle. So what I'm guessing, uh, which is probably the case, is that this cooler was making a lot of contact dead center and less contact around the edge here. So it's a concave IHS at that point. So the IHS it's is concave exactly. and this is convex which is absolutely beautiful. Wow, look at that. Okay, but now how do you get it off of here? Because has it ruined my heat sink? Okay, it hasn't ruined your heat sink. You're gonna have to give me one second uh, because you, you don't wanna just peel it off. Because if you peel it off, you're likely to just create creases on the uh, indium. So give me one second. So this is what you need, a straight razor blade. Um, essentially, why you need that, just to scrape it off. Uh, don't worry, I'm don't not scratch gonna- scratch my heat sink. I'm not gonna scratch the the-, the heat sink. So you just scrape it like this. And you need a lot steadier hands than I have. And at some point it's just gonna kind of pop off. So give it a moment. So are you saying that you can reuse this stuff? Yes, you, you can. don't mess it up too much? There you go. See? Now it's back to being straight. I should have worn gloves. But then you can just apply it on another CPU, push it down with the cooler, and boom, you got a thermal pad that works just as well as thermal paste. Okay, so now I guess I will be putting on my aluminum foil and see how that works. So we've got the aluminum system here and it's been running for about 45 minutes, almost an hour. <laughs> and as you can see, uh, the results are pretty impressive. The hottest core got all the way up to 83 degrees Celsius. Okay, so not as good as indium, not even close to indium, but no. it bridges the gap between indium and nothing at all. It's like dead center. Exactly, so I guess that brings us sort of the conclusion. And that is, it's really, really cool to find these niche products on the market that you can use for pretty innovative solutions. And I think we really wanna find more of these, but there's a cost associated to it as well. Yeah, this is pretty expensive. It's 35 bucks, I believe US. And um, as is, it's a 100 mil by 100 mil sheet. Technically, it's not that bad. You could cut it up and sell it, you know, $5 a pop for each of your friends that have PCs, <laughs> and they don't have to worry about thermal paste. You don't have to either. But it also has one extra advantage. It's actually a 100 mil by 100 mil. You could put it on Threadripper. You could put it on an HEDT system. It doesn't matter. You're not limited by the size of the thermal pad, like with IC Diamond and Thermal Grizzlies versions. So I was actually hoping that this wouldn't do as good as it did, but at the same time, this has me wondering, is this just the tip of the iceberg? Should we do more of this content where we test these type of products that you guys might not have heard of, but it might come in really handy for your PC building or other needs? So I guess leave us some comments below about what else you might have found out there if you want to see some more content. Well, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. And I'm Snows from Boot Sequence, and now a little bit Hardware Canucks. Or maybe a lot if some more of these things come to pass. But uh, anyways, Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.